aberrancy or aberrant conduction refer to any situation in which a depolarization wave is conducted through cardiac tissue outside established pathways. We've come across many examples of aberrant conduction throughout this course, both within the atria and ventricles. Examples of aberrancy within the ventricles include conduction of ventricular ectopics and conduction of ventricular depolarization in the presence of a bundle branch block. In these situations, aberrant conduction within the ventricles results in altered QRS complex morphology with widening of the complexes beyond the upper limit of normal duration as the depolarization wave spreads slowly by direct cell-to-cell -cell contact outside the conducting system. There are other causes of aberrancy within the ventricles which you need to be aware of. So far we have considered bundle branch block as a permanent entity on the ECG. It is possible, however, for conduction in one of the branches of the bundle of Hiss to fail on an intermittent or transient basis. This form of aberrant conduction can be very important when diagnosing arrhythmias. As with any electrically active cardiac tissue, depolarization of the right or left branch of the bundle of Hiss is followed by a refractory period illustrated here in red when the tissue of the branches will not depolarize in response to further signals. Furthermore, the refractory period of the ventricular conducting system adjusts in response to the rate at which depolarizing events arrive. Specifically, the refractory period of the left and right bundle branches become more prolonged as the heart rate slows. Also, as illustrated here, the left and right bundles have slightly different electrical properties with the right bundle branch having a longer refractory period than the left. And this difference becomes more pronounced at lower heart rate. For these reasons, it is possible for the right bundle branch in particular to be caught in a refractory state in the presence of a sudden, unexpected change in the rate at which depolarizing signal arrives through the bundle of Hiss. The simplest example of this is seen in some cases of very early atrial or junctional premature contractions. In the example shown here, the heart is beating at 60 beats per minute. At this relatively slow heart rate, the refractory period of the bundle branches is prolonged and the difference between the refractory periods of the right and left branches is appreciable. At this point in time, a focus within the junctional region has discharged, generating a premature junctional contraction. However, note that the premature discharge has occurred at a time when a region of the right bundle branch is still in a state refractory to transmission of depolarization. The initial events of the QRS complex associated with this premature discharge are conducted as normal through the left bundle branch and will depolarize the left ventricle in the normal fashion. However, once the premature depolarization wave encounters the refractory portion of the right bundle, the right side of the heart must be depolarized by signal traveling outside the conducting system. Aberrant conduction by direct cell-to-cell -cell contact outside the conducting system results in a broad QRS complex with right bundle branch block morphology. How can we tell such an aberrantly conducted premature junctional contraction from a premature ventricular contraction? Well, in truth, often with great difficulty. However, as the initial events of ventricular depolarization occur as normal, the initial portion of the QRS complex of an aberrantly conducted premature junctional or premature atrial contraction will often be identical to the initial period of the preceding normal complexes. If the block is close to the AV node, this initial period can be very short. In practice, if a wide premature QRS complex is initiated in the same direction as the normal complexes, and this is observed in several leads, it is likely to represent an aberrantly conducted premature atrial or junctional contraction. If the complex is initiated in the opposite direction, it is likely to represent a premature ventricular contraction. 
Transient aberrant conduction may also be observed in atrial fibrillation. You will remember that in this arrhythmia, the transmission of atrial depolarization events into the ventricles is chaotic, resulting in a ventricular rate that varies unpredictably with time. In the example shown here, note the chaotic generation of QRS complexes, secondary to depolarization events arising in the fibrillating atria. At this point, a relatively long period between ventricular depolarization events has been followed by a QRS complex demonstrating evidence of aberrant conduction. What has happened in this case is that the bundle branches refractory period have lengthened during this prolonged gap between ventricular depolarizations. An early transmitted atrial depolarization wave has then encountered the right bundle branch while it is in a state refractory to transmission. Aberrant conduction results in the presence of a broad QRS complex. Aberrant ventricular conduction of an early depolarization wave following a long OR interval in atrial fibrillation is termed Ashman's phenomenon. Although this may affect either bundle branch, as shown here, the transient block usually occurs in the right bundle, and the aberrantly conducted complex, therefore, usually demonstrates a right bundle branch block morphology. A transient failure of conduction can also develop in either bundle branch in response to elevation of the heart rate. Acceleration or rate-dependent aberrancy refers to a failure of conduction in a bundle branch when the heart rate rises to a certain level. In this patient with known heart disease, at a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, the ventricular conducting system is fully functional with narrow QRS complexes on the monitor. As his heart rate begins to rise, note that after a short period of time at a rate of 96 beats per minute, conduction in the left bundle branch fails and he develops a left bundle branch block pattern on the ECG resulting in broad positive QRS complexes in V6 with associated ST changes. Acceleration dependent aberrancy can be observed in normal hearts at extremely high heart rates. However, it is usually a marker of organic heart disease and in such individuals can be observed at surprisingly low heart rates. In individual patients, it may be triggered on reaching a given heart rate or may be dependent on the time spent at a higher heart rate. You will appreciate its importance. Patients with organic heart disease are subject to arrhythmias. If a patient prone to this phenomenon develops a tachycardia from a supraventricular focus, failure of a bundle branch at the higher heart rate will result in broad QRS complexes on the ECG. Differentiating such an aberrantly conducted SVT from a ventricular tachycardia is important, as in hemodynamically stable patients, the treatment of these arrhythmias differs.